down there. Chill, that's cool. What's up guys, my name is Charlie, that's Patrick Kirby's filming right now, and today we're in California, in Monterey, to check out an underwater forest. While exploring the US, we visited some of the coolest forests in the entire country, but we were in the mood for something really different. So we came here to Monterey to check out kelp forests, and our friends Alex and Sabine showed us some of their favorite spots. Monterey Bay harbors some of the richest aquatic environments in the entire west coast, and some of the coolest kelp forests you've ever seen in your entire life, so we had to check them out. The water in Monterey was insanely cold, so we wetsuited up, Kerb and I threw on some scuba tanks, Pat went free diving because he's a boss, gonna hold his breath for like 45 minutes and with cameras in hand we submerged into the forest canopy. Swimming through the kelp was one of the coolest things we've ever done. We were weaving through the enormous kelp columns, light was shining through the canopy, the sea floor was teeming with life all different sorts of things we've never seen before. It was really incredible. There's no way we could have seen all this stuff from outside of the water. Here's what we found out while diving. Kelp forests are awesome. They're like super cool underwater forests. And to a few bio nerds, what could possibly be cooler than that? Well, the honest answer is probably nothing. So obviously we had an incredible time down there. And we found out that kelp are super cool organisms too. I mean, for one thing, they're one of the fastest growing organisms in the entire world. They can grow up to two feet in a single day, super quick. Think about that this way. It took Patrick 17 years to grow six feet. Kelp grow much more quickly. So to grow six feet, take a piece of kelp Monday, Tuesday, and maybe a bit of Wednesday. Crazy thing is these speed growers aren't even a kind of plant. They're actually a kind of brown algae. One of the main differences between algae and plants is that algae do not have vascular systems. Plants have all sorts of internal tubes that allow them to soak up nutrients through their roots, but algae do not. In algae, every single cell absorbs its own nutrients. All right, so right off the bat, kelp are not plants. But even so, kelp and kelp forests are really similar to trees in normal forests. For one thing, both kelp and trees obtain energy through absorbing sunlight. Roots hold trees in place and holdfasts keep kelp in place, fastening them to rock type things. Trees have trunks, kelp have similar structures named stipes, trees have leaves, and kelp have blades, pretty leafish and physically similar. Normal forests change from season to season, and kelp forests do too, in pretty much the same exact way. In fall, one by one, all the blades fall off the kelp. In winter, everything's pretty much dead because storms roll in, and then things come back to life in the spring, so it's pretty much like a normal forest. All right, so we got it. They're similar to forests, and they're not too bad looking either. I've never had an experience that literally took my breath away, but the first time I rolled over while underwater and looked up at this kelp, I literally gasped and couldn't breathe. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. But then I mean I started breathing again because if I didn't my lungs would have exploded because that's kind of how scuba diving works. So there are many different kinds of kelp in Monterey but we found out that there are two main kinds. There's giant kelp and then bull kelp. If you need something more specific you gotta check out the pneumaticists. Pneumaticists are like little kelp water wings. They're tiny bladders of air that keep kelp afloat. Bull kelp and giant kelp have different kinds of pneumaticists. Bull kelp have one giant one at the top that keep things afloat like a big hot air balloon. And giant kelp have smaller ones attached to each individual blade that together keep the kelp afloat. One pneumaticist, bull kelp. Many pneumaticists, giant kelp. Pneumaticists allow kelp to grow upwards towards the surface, and this gives them a distinct canopy and understory feel. So even though we were underwater, it felt like we were in an actual forest, meandering our way through enormous trees. But it felt more like we were flying through a forest since we could go up and down and check out every area of this underwater ecosystem. Just like a normal forest, the canopy and understory each support their own unique microenvironments. We ran into so many different things down there, like tiny fish, tinier fish, and even tinier fish, a group of curious seals that swam right up next to us. There were crabs and barnacles, starfish, tons of giant sluggy things, this crazy underwater mini Dr. Seuss tree, and these awesome hungry cormorants that swam around us for a super long time. It was really incredible to experience, but the tricky thing is, sometimes the kelp forest starts supporting things that they don't really want to be there, specifically purple sea urchins.
Purple sea urchins are the worst. There's no other way to say it. I mean, they're pokey and ugly, and on top of that, they absolutely wreck cow forests. Sea urchins collect in herds underwater. Yes, herds, like herds of cattle, but they're tiny tennis ball-sized spiky sea monster herds. They move around in these herds and graze on kelp, like cows on grass. And unfortunately, they graze a little too much and decimate these forests at a rate of 30 feet per month, which is super quick for these tiny little sea cows. Our biggest advocate in the fight against sea urchins and the protection of kelp forests sea otters. Sea otters prey on urchins. They eat them up for breakfast and are generally adorable. They do their best to demolish, destroy, devour, and according to Patrick, body slam sea urchins, which helps ensure that kelp stick around for some time. So kelp forests, similar to trees but still aren't plants, have pneumatocysts, are dependent on sea otters, and are seriously fun to swim through. 